We love his word and we want his word spiritually. Verse 30. They said therefore unto him, What signs showest thou them that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. What are they doing here? What sign can you show me? Amen. You know, what sign can you show me? Physical again, right? And now, he, don't you take this as kind of a challenge? Moses gave them what? Manna yeah. from where? Yeah. From heaven. Yeah. Did Moses give them that manna? Yeah. Oh, no. Who, who gave them that manna? Oh, God. God did. Of course he did. Every yeah. day. Huh? Every day, and they couldn't hold to it either. They couldn't put it in the pocket and take it for a snack. Just once they did, they pulled out worms. They didn't gather no more than what they needed. They did. If they did, it spoiled, yeah. didn't they? They couldn't do it on Saturday. It had, uh, or Friday. Yeah, Friday. And, and so, so it would be there so they could, wouldn't have to do that on, on the Sabbath. On I mean, the Sabbath. it's all pl planned and it's perfect because it came from God. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's what, that's what he's, he's going to tell them in 32. Jesus is right back on the spiritual side. He said, Then Jesus said, And very, very, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Once again, he's saying what? Who's the bread of life? Yeah. Jesus is. Yeah. My Father gave you this bread that comes down from heaven, and here I am. Here it is. When you believe on this, when you take this, you're going to have eternal life. Once again, I know what they're thinking, and a lot of times in this world today, we think, well, eternal life, we're never going to die. That's not right, is it? Isn't each and every one in this room, and every one we know, appointed to death? Amen. Yeah. What eternal life? We escape the second death. The second death. Well, we're going to live forever in eternity, whether it be in the Hadean world, in paradise, until Jesus comes back, and then we're going to send up into the heavens and Him. But it's the spiritual side. But they cannot hardly, hardly get over it. Then said they unto him, Lord, forevermore give us this bread. <laughs> he was standing right there. He just told them, it's me. But he's still, they're still saying what? Give me this bread. I'm ready for it. Fall down. I got my bucket. My basket. Where's it at? You know, they're still thinking of the physical side. And I understand. And it's difficult for us, isn't it? We, we live in a physical world, don't we? You know, we get up on Monday morning, we're thinking about our business or what we're going to do today or, you know, what, what's happening, what appointments, what's this, that. It, it is a physical world. But in our spiritual life, in our church life, we need to separate the physical from the spiritual and come to know that this, this physical, it don't matter how much you got, it don't matter what you attain, you don't get to take none of it. It's going to be there when you leave. And you will leave. Ecclesiastes talks about Solomon, the wisest man, talks about it all the time. You know, you're just being foolish. Somebody else is going to come. Somebody else is going to live here. Somebody else is going to have this. That's just the way it is. And we can't get over the physical. But we really need to strive to get away from the physical and focus our, our attention, our energy, on spiritual matters because that's what's going to take us to heaven. That's what's going to let us have everlasting life with them. 35. And Jesus said unto, unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger it, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that you also have seen and believe not. We see these words every day. We hear lesson after lesson. People do, and they just push it aside. They just continue to live their life physical, to gain what they can, and they, they, they see it. I think the Bible is the most printed book in the world, and it, it's, it's everywhere. There, there's nobody that, that would want to have the Bible that can't have a way to get it. There's an avenue to have the Bible. If you, if you, if you have trouble reading, you can have it. People read the Bible. You can get the Bible on. I was going to say Way back, right? Yeah. But you you can do it any way. For the third said, My that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. God tells us he'll never leave us. 
we come to him, we're sincere, we strive, we're spiritual with him, he's never going to cast us out. You know, this is this this is one place in the Lord's church that we will never be cast out of. The kingdom we will never be. We have eternal membership in the kingdom. If, and as most clubs has membership, they have rules and regulations, don't they? They have things you have to abide by. It's the same way with the kingdom. We have to follow God's word on them before we can be there. He'll never cast us out. Our membership will never go, never get canceled by him. Who can cancel our membership? We can. That's right. We can. 38. For I come down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I've always loved that verse because in my mind, the way it, it works, if there's ever been a man that walked the face of this earth that could have done his will, it would have been the Son of God. And he says he never did. No instance in the New Testament can we ever find where Jesus Christ did not do his Father's will. And that's the same with us. We're his children. God's children. We have to follow his commandments. It's that simple. People say, oh, yeah, but that one binds me. And, you know, I really like that. And, well, <laughs> okay. But we can't do that. We have to follow God's commandments completely. Just as Jesus Christ did. Our example. We are to follow Christ. The example that he said. He followed his father's will. He followed it. 39. And then... <clears throat> And this is the Father's will which has sent me, and of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. What's that last day? Judgment day, the day he comes back, and what's he going to do? The dead in Christ will raise first, and then what? Those that's left on earth in Christ will do what? Raise up in the air to meet him and, and be home. He will raise it up again on that last day. He will never lose us. We'll never be lost. We, we're not going to be left behind or anything he's going to give us. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. <clears throat> Here it is. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, has it then he saith, I came down from heaven? Once again, physical, not spiritual. You know, these are, look at the 41, the second word is what? Jews. Hmm? Jews. Jews. What had the Jews been given before anybody? They've been given the Ten Commandments, haven't they? God's Word? The Word. You know, the Word. And these Jews should have known how many times in the Old Testament is Christ prophesied? Mm. Numerous. Numerous times. Numerous times. They were looking for somebody physical like David to come and be the king. Sure. Like, so they weren't looking for Jesus. They, you know, the carpenter's son, really? Yeah. <laughs> and once again, that's what? They were looking for what? Physical. Physical. They were looking for physical. They wanted a king. And then look at Saul. What, 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 what Saul was he? A little short person, a little short face person? No, no, he's head and shoulders. Taller than physical. Yeah, I want. Hey, we want. Yeah, we. we. But they were being ruled by the Romans. They wanted somebody that they wanted yeah. to own the land. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted power. Yeah. They wanted the they wanted to be back in charge, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. They wanted to be back in charge. That's what they wanted. They wanted to be back in charge. It's 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 always the physical. So, you know, then they talk to us, not this Jesus, the son of Joseph. 43, says, Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. prophets. <laughs> and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. They should have known that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was coming. They should have known that. Well, even Paul asked Agrippa, said, don't you believe the prophets? You know, like, mm -hmm. if you believe Jesus, believe, if yeah. you believe the prophets. Yeah. And then when over in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus went to him tonight, yeah. he said, we know 
We know you come to God. You couldn't do the things that you do if you didn't come. You're checking off all the boxes. <laughs> we might not want you to. Right. Yeah. 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 You 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 completed the survey correctly. Yeah. That's, right. that, that's what you said too. That they knew because the prophecy told them how many times they were going to be in captivity, and then when they get down to the last, he's going to set up that kingdom that would last forever. Plus, they they'd been prophesied there, but they didn't, and that's what God. Stephen Stone, he, he, he brought up that history of what they've done, how they lived and stuff and whatever. But then we have the verse today, because you know the Jews knew. Now, to him who know what to do good, and do it not, to him it's what? Sin. And then we know what sin is. He just keeps telling us, but it's God's plan, it's perfect. It's right. when we take it out of context and fit our place. They do. It, it won't, it, it won't. Get us ahead. And, but then when Jesus did have multitudes following him, they got mad when they realized he's not physical. He's not the physical king. I mean, didn't, he didn't have a big palace nowhere and sit on a big throne and let them come in and bow down to him, did he? No. No. That's what they were But see, that's the question they asked. When are you going to set up the earthly kingdom? Yeah. When are you going to let my son sit on these things? He's going to be side. great. Yeah. You know, still looking at Pharisees, Sadducees, Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. This is what we're accustomed to. Yeah. Well, you got to get away from that now. And you got to get away from that. Still, still looking at the physical. Amen. And that's the point is that we have to be careful today and make sure that in our lives, our walk with God, in our spiritual life, we don't look for the physical. We look for the spiritual. You know, it really doesn't matter sometimes if that big deal doesn't come through. It doesn't matter sometimes if... Might be a reason. I, you know, Might be a reason. Oh, yeah, there, there, there is a reason. reason. There is a reason. Yeah, but the physical part of life <coughs> is the yeah. it's, it's that baby that Satan has that all of us want. It's so called we're human. So many people will follow the man behind the pulpit. Don't follow me. Now, put it on what I'm saying. When he leaves, it's all, it's all temporal. Oh, I yeah. saw that. I saw that in the Lord's church. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I saw yeah. it. It, 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 it. It's not just in the denomination. No. Verse 46. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. That's just him saying, you know, the Bible tells us no man can look upon God and live. But he says the one that he sent, one that I am. That's me. I've seen him. Yeah. I've, I've been there. I've come from there. You know. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that liveth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Amen. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Now, he, he said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness. And what did they do? They physically did what? They died. They died, yeah. But he's telling them, you eat this bread from heaven. I am that bread of life. You will not die. But he's not talking about spiritual. a physical death. Spiritual. He's talking about a spiritual death. And that's the one thing that I've got a lesson I do uh, some about the billions of dollars that's been spent on youth. You know, I don't know how I ask, sometimes I ask a lady, I say, how much you got sitting on your dresser? You know, you got youth cream, you know, wrinkle cream maybe, or, you know, you know, yeah. I mean, come on. I, you know, it's probably there, it's most I'm right, you know. You're trying to look young, you spend billions of dollars. In this country, it's in this world, it's big business, but it's, it's vain. It's really vanity. You know, it's really vanity. Amen. You know, I know, you know, you got to look your best, you got to keep your spouse, you got I mean, you know, all these things come into play because we're physical. And us men, you know, we don't want no, you know, we want to stay kind of trim too because, you know, the, the ladies might look at a 20-year-old and got a six-pack and, you know, I mean, it's just, it's nature yeah, okay. that way. It, that's nature. <laughs> We got a six pack and we got a keg. <laughs> we got the cooler than keg. <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's just nature. We need to avoid that as much as we can. But it, it's something that we're going to do in a some way. We need to keep it in perspective of what it is. There's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with trying to stay looking good. 
There's not inherently anything sinful about that. But if it consumes you, yeah. that is. Good. Good. Um, if, it, if it consumes you and you don't care about the spiritual stuff, right. then only, then that's, that's the trap. Yeah. And the more you look, you know, it's, it's, it's working. You know, if I get a little bit more, if I get a little better product, it'll work better. I, you know, I, I look even better. It, it, it's a trap within itself, and Satan uses these physical yeah. things in our lives. Satan knows us better than we know ourselves. Yep. He knows exactly what to put in front of us and exactly how to dress it up. That's Satan's job. He's been doing it for how long? Thousands of years. We've just been doing it for reason of strength, 60 and 3 score, 10, 70, you know, reason of strength, more. That's all the time we have. Oh, Satan, he's already got it for the one coming up now. He, he knows them. He, he knows mankind. Satan does better than we'll ever know ourselves. And he uses those physical things just like he's using it on these Jews in, 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 in my opinion. 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man into this breath he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Now, some of these Jews, as we know, he has fed the 5,000 because he took the loaves and the fishes and he fed them. And some of these people, as we read verse 22, the day following when the people stood on the other side, they saw he had gone. Some of those people got in boats and went across. They know he had just fed them physically and he didn't use a piece of his They were taking it literally. They take him what he's saying here literally. Yeah. But they know he had just fed them and they didn't, he didn't feed them their flesh, his flesh. He fed them fish and bread. Yeah. What, you know, what, what they ought to be eating. But they want to know how he could do this. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. These are Jews they're talking to. You go back in the Old Testament and, and you read the commandments of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And it tells you, do not drink blood. Do not eat blood. Stay away from the blood. That's what it tells you. And then, once again, when we say 41, the second word is Jews, this is something else these people should have known. So see, when somebody comes in to us in our spiritual walk of life and with us, and they, 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 they tell us something, you don't have to attend a regular church. You know, you just go where you want to. But we say, oh man, that sounds pretty good. I'm going fishing today. You know, what are we supposed to know? Not to forsake what? The saints. Of the saints. We're supposed to know that. So if they tell us that, what are we supposed to say? You know, we're supposed to know you're telling me wrong. Well, you don't have to be baptized to go to heaven and, and believe, you know. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be washed clean in the, in the pool of baptism and, and be washed in the blood. And we accept that. We buy into that. What have we focused our life on mostly? Physical or spiritual? Physical, haven't we? Because we haven't done the one. We haven't studied or learned the Word of God. Because if we had known that, what would we tell him people? Well, brother, man, you need to sit down and, and open the Bible up. I need to you know, I may bring some passages to you. We need to study about baptism. We need to study about how you do this. See, these people should have known that. But they dwell on the physical. That's the danger. Ooh, ooh, danger, Will Robertson. Danger, Will Robertson. You know? That's the physical. That's the physical. And that's what is dangerous. That's what keeps us, gets us, and holds us. But another step, it's like not forsaking the assembly. But it's the day you don't forsake this in the first day of the week yes. that he's brought forth. Yes. They're looking at the Sabbath and they're looking at all he's got. He, he says he, he's Joseph. Well, I know his I know his brothers and sisters, mother and all that, but they're still looking at the physical. Mm -hmm. But that assembly that you're forsaking, you can't do it according to what the Jews did on Saturday. It's the first first day of the week. That's what he wrote. That's that's his plan to come into the thing. That's right. That's right. That's, that, that's exactly right. <clears throat> 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. There's that last day again. 
He's telling us he's going to come back. He's going to get us. It ain't going to be a physical. It's a spiritual. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. I have dealt personally myself with individuals in the Lord's church that believes when we partake of this that it actually turns into the blood of Christ and the flesh of Christ. Hmm. And the Catholics teach that through a big old word this long that I can never remember. But it, they, they, they teach that, that when you take that, you're actually eating the flesh of Christ and the blood of Christ. And I've dealt with this issue in the Lord's church here in this valley uh, with that. And it, 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 was, it was actually taught back years ago that way. So they think that it's a miracle, like the Catholic Church teaches, that it's a miracle that it becomes his flesh and blood, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. There's a big old word for it. Yeah. Uh, Trans, I, I don't know, something, but I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm not very literate, as y'all know, when it comes to my vocabulary. <laughs> i got a lot to be desired. 56, he that eat my flesh, drink my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, as I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue, so as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? What we've just said today in this class, and what we've studied, most religious organizations, denominationalism, that what you just said, preacher, what you've made is a hard saying. But you know what? When you preach Jesus Christ, it tells us in so many places in the Bible, when you preach Jesus Christ, you preach hard sayings. You preach things that's hard. And, and let's, let's understand why they're hard. Why are they hard? It, I read it. I didn't do too bad a job. My pr pronunciation was, was closed on most of them. So it's not that. It's that hard. It, it's not hard to say it. I could call on several people in this room and I, they could read very good and we could understand. That's not what's hard about it. What's hard about it is that we're trying to take the physical away from them. They don't want to give it up. Amen. What did the Jews want? They wanted us. We made several comments earlier about the king they wanted, the power they wanted back, the things they wanted in their life to be back on number one. That's the physical thing that those hard sayings take away. When we tell that you must be baptized, and one of, you know, one of the, one of the hardest things in, in the church is we, we teach the truth on baptism. We teach the truth on divorce and remarriage. We treat, teach the truth on, on, on what it is to be a Christian, what it is to live a Christian life, what one has to do. We teach those things. Those are the hard sayings. Those are the hard sayings. Those are the ones that say, you telling me that I can't do something? That I have to refrain myself? Those are the hard sayings from the physical standpoint. We see it. Those that love the Lord and love His Word and understand it and read it and strive to do it, live in it, we see that's a spiritual side. That we got a home we're going to on the last day. On that last day. See, how many times did he say it through this? The last day. The last day. On the last day. That's where we're banking. That's where I'm putting my spiritual. So the physical doesn't matter. But we can't get the physical out of us completely. We never will. I, I haven't. I, 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 nobody in here will. Because we live in a physical world. You know? And it's going to be that way. But we have to strive to do spiritual and think spiritual. And I, I, I tell you, if you train yourself to look at a situation and come to a point to where you want to understand the spiritual aspect of it, and look at it that way and go to God's word and weigh between the physical and the spiritual, it gets easier as time goes along. It gets easier to do that if you, if you will take that time. But it's a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured it, he said to them, Does this offend you? That offend our ASB translate, does this cause you to stumble? 
what and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up to where he was before. We know over in Acts chapter 1, that's exactly what they saw, wasn't it? He ascended right back up to where he came from. Is the Spirit, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are alive. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him by of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went away and walked no more with him. Sure. Those hard sayings, they went away. They walked no more with him. And that's what happened. I, I've been in the church now 26 years, and I've saw hard sayings put them out the door. I've heard them really walk no more with him. Because the truth was taught. The truth of God's word. That is the bread of life. I am the truth and the way. No man cometh unto me but by my Father. I am that. That's, that's what he is. He's the life. On that. Questions? Comments? Anybody? Anything? Uh, we know. <laughs> right. That word is tra transubstantiation. Okay, I know the story with the <laughs> Yeah. I don't really understand what the benefit that they're saying, you know, I yeah. think that but friends, but I don't really understand the benefit of that becoming it, it, it's, 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 I've, I've dealt with it in the church. I've also dealt with alcoholic wine on the table okay. in the church and stuff like that. Yeah. They say that that's what the Bible says. Yeah. You've got to have alcohol in your wine for the wine. That's not true. That's just something I was just saying. Is it round of death?